to 2 Samuel back in the Old Testament, chapter number 24. And tonight, I've, I've thought and thought and thought about this, so I'm going to tell you how to get rid of the coronavirus. Now, I'm not talking about just if you got it, the whole thing, worldwide. 2 Samuel, chapter number uh, 24. You got to get rid of the coronavirus. I'm going to tell you how to get rid of it tonight. And I'm going to give you three different views of how to get rid of the coronavirus. First of all, there is the crazy view. Second, there is the global view. And thirdly, there's God's view. And of course, that's whose side I'm on. There's a crazy view. Now, in this story tonight, David had sinned in numbering the people. That's always been a that's always been a a, a, a strange scripture to me. How, how he, uh, David numbered the people, and, and but his, it turned out to be a major sin. And it didn't say he counted them; it said he numbered them. So there was something in his motive or his attitude or something that wasn't right about that. We'll study that another time. But anyway, the Lord offered him three ways of punishment. And he said, which would you rather do, this, this, or this? You know, we kill a bunch of people, have a plague or whatever. And David said, I, I can't say, Lord, I'm just going to fall into your hands of mercy. And he did, and he got right, and the Lord sent the plague. And David repented and all of that kind of stuff, got, got right. And um, then he said this, verse 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace, peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. Tonight, I want to talk about how to get rid of the uh, coronavirus. And there's three views. There's three ways to get rid of this. What I call crazy way, what I call the uh, global way, and then what I call God's way. Now... Uh, the Lord sent this plague. I preached a couple of Wednesday nights ago about uh, the Lord sending the plague, and uh, I, I, I talked to you about uh, how that how that God sends plagues all the way through the Bible, and that always they're the punishment of somebody's sins usually. And uh, when uh, when God sends a plague and then people repent, God removes the plague. God sends the plague, people repent, God removes the plague. And it's always been that way. I, I don't, there's no question in my mind about this at all. I believe the Lord sent it and at least allowed it uh, to get people's attention. And uh, it's not doing too good. I think Mike Pence mentioned something about the Lord in prayer and they just laughed at him, made fun of him. The guy that with the my pillow mentioned the Lord. There's been several people, even the president, they said something about we need to work on our personal relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great? Uh, uh, and others have said something about maybe the Lord, and then they get laughed at. People say, oh, how silly, how silly that is. Well, it ain't silly. It ain't silly. Now, there's a crazy view. I'm going to show you that one first. Then there's the global view. I'll show you that one second. And then God's view will finish up tonight. So uh, I hope you can get a good shot of this. Everybody, all these cameras going on in here tonight. Uh, you'll try it. And we'll, we'll go ahead, Wes, and let's see what we can do here tonight. And I will show you, first of all, this evening, uh, the, the uh, crazy view of how to get rid of the coronavirus. Now, you guys back here will have to do the volume. Boy, me, Dylan, make sure it's plenty loud for everybody. And uh, you got all them across the front there. You just punch them. And uh, there we go. We're getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Getting there. One more. It says uh, that one's. There you go. All right. Here's the crazy view. You ready? Watch this. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office Outer. of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, oh. Satan, you destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, you get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand, oh. I demand. Wait a minute now. 
patient, so he's talking to the coronavirus. Reckon it can hear? I'm not trying to be ugly. Listen, I taught my girls all their life that you should not say anything about a preacher, the man of God. I'm not saying he is or he ain't. I don't, I don't have nothing against the guy personally. Uh, and, and, and if he's got faith, praise God, more power to him. But you can't, you can't talk to the coronavirus. It can't hear you. Listen. I demand Oops. a vaccination to come immediately. Yeah. I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Now you can turn it down. I'm not. There you go. You getting it? Uh, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. And that was a week, two weeks ago. It didn't come. We still ain't got no vaccination. This is the crazy view. Now what's happened? All these healing preachers have preached herself into a corner and got herself into a mess where they demand this, they demand that. Listen, listen he, he, as far as I know, not one case of coronavirus has been miraculously healed by these guys. Now, uh, I call you done. I call you done gone. You come down. From your place of authority, destroyer, you come down and you crawl on your belly like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, his theology is messed up there. Oh, he got off the coronavirus and got on the devil and he said, I command you to come down and crawl on your belly and like God put his foot on you. The Lord never put his foot on the devil's head in the Garden of Eden. That ain't even happened yet. He will at the second advent. He'll put his foot on his head and crush him. But he told the Romans, he said, God shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. That ain't even happened yet. But what he's saying is, I command the coronavirus to leave America alone. Now that's what makes people think Christians are crazy and preachers are crooks. Stuff like that. All right, here we go. In the Garden of Eden. You will destroy through COVID-19. No more. No more. No more. No more. It no more. is finished. Finished. It's an odd scripture to quote, isn't it? About Christ dying on the cross, paying for our sins. And he said it's on the coronavirus. It's finished. Here we go. It is over. And the United States of America is healed you, and well Thank you. again. Well, I hate to say this, but no, it ain't. I wish that was true. I wish that was true. There's several things wrong with what he just said. Uh, the United States of America is healed and well again. It wasn't well before this happened. And if you're going ahead and curse, if you can curse the coronavirus, and go ahead and get rid of it. Just get cancer while you're at it, and diabetes, and 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 all heart failure, and heart and high blood pressure. Just get it all. Now them guys, they think we're in the millennium, or think we're getting ready. They, listen, when the when Jesus was here, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was preparation for the millennium, people. John the Baptist came saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then they rejected the kingdom. He turned to the Gentiles, and we're in the church age now. That doctrine will come back true again when that will happen again. But not now. They, get, they don't even understand the Bible. That's the crazy view that has not got rid of the coronavirus. Now let's talk about the global view. Saith the mighty Hallelujah. Spirit. Glory. Glory. Of peace, who is awesome. Here's the global view. Look at this. We're not ready for the next epidemic. We're not ready for a serious epidemic. An epidemic that would be more infectious and would spread faster than Ebola did. That's Bill Gates. Now, I, I, I don't have nothing against the man. Don't know him. Wouldn't, I might know him if he walked in because I saw his picture on here. Nothing personal. But something mighty, mighty fishy about his ties to all of this. There is growing, growing question and all about even the origin of the coronavirus. Look here what they did here just a few months ago. 
In October 2019, just a couple months before the arrival of COVID-19, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, in cooperation with the John Hopkins Center for Health Security and the World Economics Forum, hosted Event 201, a three and a half hour tabletop exercise that simulated a series of dramatic scenarios relating to a hypothetical pandemic. Strangely enough, this exercise was about a novel coronavirus that would kill millions. That was in October. They had this big, huge meeting that lasted hours on what would happen if a coronavirus happened to hit, to hit the world. Nearly eight weeks after the simulation, an outbreak of a novel coronavirus turned into a reality in China. At least, that's what we're told. This led some media to about a day after the world began locking down due to the virus, Bill Gates stepped down from the public board of Microsoft. All right, hold on. About a day or two after they announced the lockdown, he steps down from his position at Microsoft. Coincidence? I don't know. Keep listening. Dedicate more time to the philanthropic properties including global health and development, education, and my increasing engagement in tackling climate change. What he's saying is, he was, he, was, he was for, four years ago, reducing the population by 10 to 15%. And he said, I stepped down from Microsoft just all of a sudden to dedicate my time to health issues and climate change. Now listen, I told you the other day that they're going to use this virus to advance the people that believe in climate change are, are even happy about a lot of this. They're saying, well, at least we're not polluting the air. At least we're not running these machines. At least we got all these planes grounded. It's almost like industry was the enemy and the coronavirus was the cure. And that's not right. That's not right. There, there is a, a movement among the elite of this world to, to crash the economy and bring us into a position where we'd have to accept a one world government. Let's go here now. Co-founder Bill Gates is going to be stepping down from the company's board of directors. As the pandemic swept across the earth, Gates has been elevated to a status of supreme authority for the pandemic crisis. Me Anything on Reddit titled, I'm Bill Gates, co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Ask me anything about COVID-19. One question in particular produced an answer by Bill Gates that revealed a plan for a digital certificate to keep track of who got vaccinated. A Reddit user named Remote Controlled User asked this question. What changes are we going to have to make to how businesses operate to maintain our economy while providing social distancing? Bill Gates' answer? The question of which businesses should keep going is tricky. Certainly food supply and the health system. We still need water, electricity, and the internet. Supply chains for critical things need to be maintained. Countries are still figuring out what to keep running. Eventually, we will have some digital certificates to show who has recovered or been tested recently or when we have a vaccine, who has received it. Whoa. Eventually, we will have some digital certificates. That ain't a piece of paper. Digital certificates, electronic certificates to see who's been, had vaccinate, who's been vaccinated, who has been treated, who has been, had the virus. Uh, he said this, this is going to happen. That's what he's saying. Let's go. Such as a microchip that will grant you an identity within the beast system, allowing you to participate in basic societal functions like the right to buy and sell goods. Others believe the mark to be metaphorical and receiving the mark on your forehead. Okay, so this idea of a digital certificate to store medical information, including vaccines received, is currently in the works as part of a massive project called ID2020. I told you about that the other day, ID 2020. And this is, a, this is a humongous, gigantic movement to get everybody in the, quote, system and be numbered. And that's the best excuse they could ever find to do something like this is this pandemic we're having, or plandemic, as he called it. I, I don't know. I won't, I won't make that charge. It, there's... People believe that. I'm, I don't claim to be an authority on it. But I know one thing. I, I know the devil's using it to whip up the, the, his, his, his spirit to get the world ready for the Antichrist to take over this world. ID 2020. What a time to do it. The United Nations in it. 
Microsoft's in it, and it's a global movement. Let's look at it a little bit more. Which is backed by the United Nations, the Rockefeller Foundation, and Microsoft. ID2020 is developing a digital identification system that will store a wealth of personal information and will transcend the barriers of national governments. The official website of ID2020 states that a global digital identity is necessary to keep track of refugees. You hear that? You hear that? It said it's necessary. It didn't say they want to. It said they are developing a, a tracking system to eventually number and, and, and track every single person on this earth. And that's why the Bible said, the Bible said that no man would buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name or the number of the beast. I, am I saying the microchips more the beast? No, I'm not. It may be, we may have to go through another emergency. But how many times y'all heard me get up here and say, uh, all that would have to happen for the world to go along with this is an emergency. Remember me saying that? I've said that for years. Got to have an emergency. Got to have an emergency. This probably won't be it. There'll probably be another one five, ten years down the road. That's my opinion. I might be wrong. But my opinion is we'll have another big emergency in a few years and finally break the back of our economy like this is about to be. All right, here we go. Idealist people in developing countries. Of course, people in developed countries will be ID'd as well. The website. That's where the one in China right now is where you are face identity where they can tell by your facial recognition whether you've been vaccinated, whether you're a legal citizen, where you're from, all your health information, all your background, any any sick sicknesses that you may have or anything like that. Okay, let's go. States, we need to get digital ID right. Unfortunately, current models of digital ID do not mean vaccines are the perfect way to introduce digital identity. Oh boy, he just said it there. Vaccines are the perfect way to introduce digital identity. What better reason? If you just come out and said, all right, we want everybody to do this, we want everybody, you're going to have a bunch of people say, no, no. So what are you going to do? Say, you got to have a vaccine. They say, we don't want a vaccine. Well, if you don't, you can't go here, you can't go there, and eventually you can't buy none or sell none. You're forced to. It's just like all this other stuff. It started out recommending 100 people. Then it went to law. Then it, then it recommended 50. Then it went law. Then it recommended 10. Then it went law. You get people a little at a time, a little at a time. Well, we didn't want to, but we have to. We didn't want to, but we have to. We didn't want to, but we have to. And eventually, you got the whole population laying in the devil's lap. ...to the world, especially infants. Appropriately titled, Immunization, an Entry Point for Digital Identity, the article states, because immunization is conducted in infancy, providing children with a digital child health card could give them a unique portable digital identity early in life. And as children grow, their digital child health card can be used to access secondary services such as primary school or ease the process of obtaining alternative credentials. Effectively, the deadline to apply for the program is April 10th. So Whoa, April 10th, that's like Friday. Please get those applications in. What's the definition of infuse? Number four here says to administer or inject. So basically, according to I. The, to infuse children. One of the definitions of infuse is to inject. Watch it, here we go. 2020, vaccinations are the perfect opportunity to introduce a digital ID that would store the medical history of each individual. This identity would also be used to grant access to basic rights and services. All right, hear that. This identity would also be used to grant basic rights. Like what? Go in the store and buying gas, groceries, basic rights. No man might buy or sell. Man, oh man, man, I preached that 30 years ago. We said the day is going to come when you'll go in the supermarket. And people thought, oh my goodness, that'll never happen. Well, let's just keep going here. Here we go. Form of embedded vaccine identification that Bill Gates has been funding research on is the quantum dot tattoo. All right, now he's talking about a dot tattoo. Some of you have heard about this. An actual tattoo goes on the skin. MIT researchers created an ink that is embedded in the skin, in the skin, alongside the vaccine itself, and it's only visible 
using a special smartphone camera app and filter. This is a covert way to embed the record of vaccination directly in a patient's skin rather than documenting it electronically or on, on paper. And the low-risk tracking system could greatly simplify the process of maintaining accurate vacuum records. I mean, listen, if something worse than this was to come along in a few years, way worse than this, way more contagious, people would say, wait a minute, you've got to get them vaccinated. We don't want you killing everybody. You're going to get out here, and they keep saying, be responsible, be responsible. That's the key word. You're not being responsible if you go. You're not being responsible if you go witness somebody. You're not being responsible. That's the way they're going to get everybody finally bow down. In December 2019, a group of researchers at MIT published a study in Science Translational Medicine about the use of quantum dot tattoos. Hold it just a second. That's December of 2019. What a, what, a, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. And it may be. What a coincidence. December of 2019, they were working on this. Okay. Identify people who received a vaccine. An article in Futurism titled, An Invisible Quantum Dot Tattoo Could Be Used to ID Vaccinated Kids, reviewed this study. For the people overseeing nationwide vaccination initiatives in developing countries, keeping track of who had which vaccinations and when can be a tough task. Lucian. They've created an ink that can be safely embedded in the skin alongside the vaccine itself, and it's only visible using a special smartphone camera app and filter. In other words, they found a covert way to embed the record of a vaccination directly in the patient's skin rather than documenting it electronically or on paper. And tattoo accompanying the vaccine is a pattern made up of minuscule quantum dots, tiny semiconducting crystals that reflect light, that glow under infrared light, the pattern facilitating the advancement of many different agendas, namely the deliberate crashing of the economy and the expansion of power for the... The deliberate crashing of the economy. Do I believe that's what's happened? I don't know. It seems like it. It definitely seems like it. It definitely seems like it. That is, they have, I'm not saying the coronavirus ain't real. I'm saying they use this as an opportunity to crash the economy of the United States and the rest of the world. Keep watching. Here we go. Pathic of the cool. Former UK Prime Minister. Now look at this. The former UK Prime Minister is a global government. He calls for a global government. One world government. He's calling for a global government to be formed, y'all. Listen to this. And key Bilderberg meeting attendee. Gordon Brown has called on the world leaders to form a temporary global government in response to the coronavirus pandemic. So obviously there's a push for a one world order. No. The Pope Francis called for a one world government to save humanity. <whistles> my, my. What kind of a religious leader is in favor of a one world government? That's Satan's plan. But check this out. Earlier I briefly mentioned how the Rockefeller Foundation is a financial backer of Project ID2012. Rockefeller Foundation published a report called Scenarios for the Future of Technology and AIDS as a Save the World campaign, when in fact, it's the blueprint that brings about the implementation of the One World Order. Here's all these companies and business stuff. It's a One World Order is their goal. All right. The G. Cities are going to be marked, cars are going to be marked. That doesn't keep up with you. People are going to be tracked from the cradle to the grave with microchip implants that digitally store everything there is to know about them, including their finances and their ability to make transactions. That's why I tend to think people all over the world are doing experimental microchipping. Not to mention what's happening now with ID2020. We're also moving towards a we're also moving towards a cashless society with every day that passes. This pandemic is carrying multiple agendas forward. The push for... Look at all that stuff that uh, the coronavirus is causing. Hysteria, turmoil, impact, putting small businesses out of business. So when the economy, if and when, opens up, uh, many of the small businesses will be gone. High-powered companies, Really, really rich or really, really poor. That's always been 
the plan of the elite, all right? Realized control of information, which is censorship and narrative control, mandatory vaccination, and digital identification. You say, well, it'll never be mandatory. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. Who would have thought this would ever happen? It's like we're living in a movie now. Who would have ever thought that, I mean, there's, there's people, you seen them people on TV, guy got arrested for surfing out in the ocean by himself. One guy got arrested because he's playing at the park with his daughter, and just him and her out there. And the cops got him. That is, listen, people, that's pushing us on closer and closer and closer to a totalitarian, totalitarian, totalitarian state. Sorry. All right, here we go. Via microchipping. This situation is the biggest show of force and seizure of power that anyone alive today has ever seen in their lifetime. You will be chipped. It's just a matter of time. A small company are going from the assembly line to front of the pack to get microchipped. Do you think this is the future? It is the future, and we look at this as uh, uh, being responsible. See that? Being responsible. This is the future. You're going to be chipped, and we look at it as being responsible. In other words, if you don't do it, you're irresponsible. You're irresponsible. The implant, which has been FDA approved, is the size of a grain of rice and is injected under the skin between the thumb and index finger by a licensed piercer. I think it's the wave of the future that we'll all have implanted chips that have our medical records. So you would do it? Sure. Okay. Well, you're carrying around a phone anyway. The Anna's get you know said, you carry around a phone anyway, what's the difference? See how the devil's getting you ready? An electronic chip implanted into her hand You've been shipped? Yes, I have. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm rich. I'm... will one day change the way we live. That in the future, we will all be chipped. In Sweden, the microchips are already here. The microchip implants use the same technology that's in contactless credit cards. Which have made, which have made cash pretty much obsolete in Sweden. No cash. Is a cashless society inevitable? How long will it take? Many countries are fast moving towards a cashless society. Between cash, you know, is in its last era. China's cashless revolution has happened in just three years. In order to avoid the risk of transmission. This is the president of Kenya. In order to avoid the risk of transmission of the disease, leave cash alone. They, they're saying that the coronavirus can live on money for up to 10 days. That money you got, you put it back in your purse, you take it out next week, still on. That's a problem. Is that right? Something's up trying to make you not want to use cash. And they're using this to get us to the place where we don't use cash, y'all. You can't see that. You are either blind or crooked or something. If you got a spiritual bone in your body, you can see that. All right. Through physical handling of money, we encourage the use of cashless transactions such as mobile money. And Earth say the coronavirus can live on surfaces like cash for up to 10 days. That has many people worried about shopping and other everyday tasks. tell you God's way out of this mess and we'll go what's the Lord say what does the Lord say they are they are they, the way that the way they get you to do something is they it's recommended at first and then when things get bad it's mandatory that I believe with all my heart when the mark the real mark of the beast comes that it will be it will be optional at first and then something will happen to make it mandatory just like all this other stuff. Can't you see it? It's like we're moving stuff. You know, and I'm not a crazy person. I'm not like that uh, guy you seen a while ago, the earlier preacher on here. I'm not commanding the coronavirus to go nowhere. I mean, if you can do it, do it. Praise God, I hope you can. I ain't, I ain't finding fault with you. If you can do it, do it. If you can't, you need to hush. But uh, if somebody can be healed from it, then the Lord can heal. The Lord can heal coronavirus. The Lord can heal cancer. I mean, he can and he does. And there probably has been people healed that we don't know about. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you this evening, God's way is for the land to repent. 
When he said, I want the, North, uh, the United States to get back to being well, brother, we wasn't well before this happened. The United States was sick to the core uh, before this happened, wicked as a devil before this happened. We don't want to get back like it was. We don't want to. I don't want the strip clubs to join the people getting drunk, shacking up, living like the devil, and saying sin's okay. Uh, I'll tell you what's the answer to this thing. If the, if the president, right on down, the members of Congress and everybody would get down on our knees and say, oh, God, we've sinned against you, and we need help. God, we need your forgiveness. Then the Lord would heal our, our land. But if that don't happen, buddy, they ain't no, the world's way out. Here, here's the world's cure. Mark everybody, vaccinate everybody, make you do it. That's their answer. That's fitting into the plan of Satan. And that's what's going to happen eventually. That's going to happen eventually. That's going to happen. The Bible said in Revelation 13, 13, you've, heard, you've seen them doing great miracles. And then on down there in the last part of the chapter, it says you'll have to have a mark in your hand or in your forehead and be recognized by a facial camera. And you'll be recognized telling people have had the vaccine. People's had the vaccine. And you know, people say, well, I wouldn't take no vaccine. Well, um, I'm not telling you you should or you shouldn't. I'm not saying all vaccines are the devil. I'm not. I had the measles uh, when I was growing up, chicken pox and everything. I don't know. I, I didn't. I don't. I don't know. Can't tell you what to do about that. But I know where it's headed. Where it's headed, there's probably something way worse than this going to happen down the road, ten years down the road, maybe. And the Lord will come back. All hell's going to break loose, and then a big disease is going to come. And the only way you can buy or sell anything. Is take a vaccination. That's what's happening. God's way out is repent. You say, well, Brother Danny, the world ain't going to repent. You're exactly right. But you can do it as an individual. You can be saved as an individual. You that are watching this, wherever you are, you can be saved as an individual. Uh, you, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You can get down right now and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe Christ died for my sins. I trust what he did for me on the cross to save my soul from hellfire. And that's your answer right there. I'm going to be praying that you'll do that. I want us to bow our head, please. You that are watching online this evening, I want you to bow your head. Every one of us bow our head and pray this evening. I want to ask you a question. Are you right with the Lord, friend? Are you right with the Lord? If you're not, get right. Get it right today. Get down right now. Bow that head. Pull that truck over. Uh, get down beside that office. Get down beside that bed or that uh, wherever you're at. Bow your head if you can't get down. And say, dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the way I've been living. Lord, I want to rededicate my life to you right now. By your grace, Lord, I repent. Lord, I'm turning from everything I know that's wrong. God, help me, Lord, to live right and serve you and do the will of God in my heart. Lord, I pray for those that may be here, uh, maybe listening that, are, that have never been saved. You touch their heart uh, tonight, Lord, and let them hear this message and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved by the grace of God. Do what ought to be done in our lives, Lord. Help us to live for you. Help us to be faithful to you no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen.